sweating my fucking tits off. It is so hot. The temperature says 96 degrees right now. So some of you that live in Florida or Texas or a hot environment, you know of what I speak. It's about four o'clock. I'm ready to get my pump on. It is a Saturday and I'm going to do a chest and back push-pull workout. I'm not sure if I want to go heavy with compound movements or if I want to kind of do some other kind of fluffy stuff, maybe more dumbbell stuff, more flies, more isolation. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to sniff it out and see how I feel. Of course, by the time you watch this video, you will know what I did because I'm going to break it all down for you in a short minute, in a hot minute but just want to give you my mindset before I go into it. I think a lot of people, when they go and show a training video, they just, hey, here's the workout. Here's the stuff that I did. Here are things I do. I don't do the same thing every day. I don't approach my fitness the same way every day. It depends on how I'm feeling. The general overarching goal of my program is to build muscle, define shape, you know, work on my endurance, my mobility. So I'm not so concerned with going heavy every single workout. So maybe it might be two more moderate stabilization, multi-planar type workouts in a row. It might be three, it might be none. It might just be heavy strength training. So when I get to the gym and I warm up, maybe today will be a deadlift day. Maybe today will be a incline bench day, for example, but we will see in just a few moments. So make sure if you're not yet subscribed to my podcast, if you want to bang your ear holes, we'll pop Swolio. You can subscribe to my Daily Swole podcast. It's available everywhere. I'll put the links down in the description below. You could also subscribe to my second channel for the live streams, Daily Swole podcast right here on YouTube. But we're going to get right into uh, today's workout. I feel good. It's hot. I got some other errands to do after today, but I hope by the time you're watching this, you're feeling good. You're feeling right. You're ready to get your fucking pump on. You're ready. You're ready. Ready for the big time, baby. Gotta get some pump on. Gotta get psyched up. <laughs> time to make some gains. Time to make some gains, fam. Let's do it. What's up, Beaches? We're gonna start this workout after uh, a warm up. I did a general warm up and I also did some rotator cuff work, some little yoga flow, and I started with a low to high cable crossover. This workout turned into uh, what I call a pre fatigue workout, and that's commonly referred to as when you start with an isolation exercise first. So, a cable crossover for many of you is a great warm up exercise, um, and I used it as kind of like a ramp up warm up into heavier sets to get a great pump before I went into some compound movements, like you'll see in a little bit. I did superset this with some dead hangs and some moderate rep pull ups. I didn't try to do as many as I possibly could, but what I did do before every single rep was to depress my scapula. I always like to activate those scapular depressors before I go through the pulling motion. And you keep your shoulders back and down. There's nothing like a shitty pull-up. You do not want to do a shitty fucking pull-up. Don't be that jabroni. So you're gonna get a couple different angles here. I got a little fancy. Look, you get that oblique angle kind of off to the side, a little artistic shot. And yeah, look at that, look at Papa Soy. Look at that man bun, look at that beard. And uh, here we got a little bit of a, a little pulsing action. We got some, I do some isometrics. I do mess around, especially when I do pull-ups first. Uh, I didn't want to go heavy, heavy, heavy. I didn't want to do plate negatives or anything like that. It just felt like something I wanted to do to open up. Something about my workouts when I get to the gym. Sometimes I just want to do more of a pump. I want to do more volume. Sometimes I just want to lift some heavy fucking weight and do more strength. So I knew I was going to do chest and back today, but I did not know exactly the execution. And I was uh, giving you a little bit of that insight before in the car. And that's really how I plan my workouts. It's not random. However, I adapt in the moment. I stay consistent. So I'm going and I'm doing my chest and back workout uh, usually twice a week, but in the individual workout, I adjust. So I don't force myself to do heavy bench press and heavy barbell rows. So when I get there, I kind of go by how I feel. Okay, I want to open it up a little bit more. I want to get more of a stretch. I want to do more volume. I want to do more reps. I want to really get that full extension, whatever it is. And that's how I map out those, um, those individual sessions. So I did slowly start going up. Most people go way too heavy with the crossovers. A couple different strategies that you can use for crossovers. You can do some circles. You can hit some different angles as long as you have good shoulder stability and good uh, no existing injuries. That can be a problem 
if you have any kind of scar tissue in there. Uh, but you can cross your hands over, you can make it more of a pressing movement, you can go forward in the machine and also back up, which will give you some different angular tension, whether you're pushing out more or you're kind of crossing over more and getting a little more inner chest action, getting a little bit more of that full horizontal um, adduction. And again, more boring pull-ups, just me hanging, getting a little bit of a squeeze, but notice how I'm always depressing my scapula first. And I went back and forth for, I don't even know how many sets. I don't count my sets, I don't count my reps. And I did probably seven or eight uh, rounds. I changed the angles, I went high, low. And you can see here, I go from kind of pushing across the body, really focusing on that horizontal adduction with the chest, not so much uh, a fly, a big arcing fly, and what I really like to do for the lower chest is supinate my forearms, my wrists, and kind of do a fly, but a push down. So it kind of simulates uh, chest dips. So for some of you that might not be able to do chest dips, maybe for some of you, chest dips bother you, this is a great alternative because there's no tension really in the joints. There's not, you're not getting that compressive force in your triceps. Some people have issues with dips with their shoulders or with their elbows, but this is a great one because you can change the angle. I could go, I don't know if I can go higher with these angles. This might be as high as the, the cables go, but you go forward a little bit and make it kind of like that pressing movement. And when you go for an underhand grip, you really get that under, that under tit. And here you can see I'm starting to go a little bit higher. So I get a little bit more of the middle upper chest. I'm really going for that squeeze in the center. So I will literally do pulse reps. I will do isometrics. I will kind of hold my hands together and do a close, uh, a close cable press. I'll walk in and out. I'll change the angle because the further you come out of the machine, the more of a pressing movement you'll get and the more of a compound type movement you'll get, the more of a shoulder and tricep work you'll get. And the closer you are inside the machine, the more of a pulling in, a pulling together move. So don't underestimate your ability to manipulate an exercise just by stepping a couple inches forward or backing up a couple inches. So here you can see how I'm kind of, I do some high, I'll let it back and do an eccentric high. Sometimes I'll do a circle. I really did not go that heavy. Like I mentioned, I was going more for reps and going more for volume. And I had an amazing fucking pump. You'll see how I put my hands together and push out. That's really great for the end range of motion. So if you're going a little bit heavier and you can't do a full crossover, once you push out to that end point, you're holding the weights together so hard because they're trying to pull apart and you really get that inner chest. You really get that horizontal adduction action of the chest. And then I went back. So I did a couple sets in a row of chest. I don't believe I went back and forth towards the end for every single set. I was only doing a full pull ups by this point anyway. And I was just kind of wrapping up until the more of a compound movement uh, pairing. So after doing the pull ups, which of course is a compound movement, which is a strength exercise. I was doing it more for kind of like a pre-fatigue in the manner that I was doing it with the crossovers. And I went into some low uh, dumbbell rows. These are just warm up sets, I believe with 50s. And the weight doesn't matter for you. Don't worry what I'm lifting. Don't worry about what anyone else is lifting. It's all about what weight is hitting your muscles correctly. That's one of the telltale signs uh, that I see for people that really take their fitness seriously and know what they're doing and people that have no fucking idea and do a lot of ego lifting. If you're going by the weight, how much you bench, how much you squat, you have no fucking idea what bodybuilding and what strength training and building muscle is all about. It's not about the weight. Yes, the weight matters, the overload matters, but relative to what you can handle. So don't worry about what the number says on the fucking dumbbell. Be more concerned with, is that the right weight that you should be using to execute the movement properly and most efficiently? One of the biggest issues that people have with a dumbbell, I only banged out a few reps here. I went a little bit heavy. I was already fucking fried from the crossovers. But one of the problems people have with a dumbbell uh, bench press is they collapse their forearms. Their forearms kind of angle in, they use more triceps and shoulder rather than the chest. So try to keep your forearms vertical when you're doing that chest press and really push in a nice wide arc and you'll feel a lot more tension in your chest. You won't be able to, you won't be able to go as heavy. So for the ego, that might hurt a lot of you gentlemen or ladies out there, uh, but it's not about how you feel, it's about the results you fucking get. So if you're wrapped up in your ego, you might wanna meditate some more and really think about what you want to achieve in the gym. So the low row is a great way to take tension off your lower back, to hit more of the lower lats, to get a different angle. You can go further forward. You can change your angle with a row in so many different ways. 
and a low row is a excellent one because you should be a little more upright. You shouldn't be kneeling on a bench. That's really uh, puts you in a risky position. I like staggering off the rack or I like doing an even stance in certain positions. But for right here for the low row, it's a great way to stay more upright, to hit the lower lats more and to go some go fucking heavy. You're not going to be risking yourself. You could just drop the weight uh, once you start fatiguing. But everyone that's got dumbbells pretty much has a rack or something to put their hand on a bench or something like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see the disgust. You see this like, oh my God, I'm fucking not putting up that much weight today. No big deal. I felt really strong with my back. My chest, I have had a great pump. I had a great pump. I felt great. Uh, I really enjoyed this workout. It just, the strength component for the chest was just, I hit more of those muscles. I fatigued them more. It was more of a pre-fatigue. It was more of a fatigue workout when I was doing the crossovers. And when I do back rows, I just go back and forth. Once I drop it, I start shifting uh, to the other side. So it's okay to get a little bit of movement. You don't have to be super stiff. Notice how I'm rounding and stretching to get more action with the lat. I can't bring my arm further forward just because of the rack I would have hit it, but I round the back to get a little bit more stretch um, from the, the lats. So I actually dropped it from 80s to 70s for the chest. And again, I'm pushing wide and a nice big arcing movement, really focusing on pulling the elbows and the humerus, the upper arm in. I'm not so concerned with what my hands are doing. And that's what a lot of people are doing. They're trying to get the weights from A to B when you should be focusing on how the weights are getting from A to B. So it's about squeezing the elbows in and squeezing the biceps in towards each other. And the hands come in kind of as an effect, like by default, because they have nowhere else to go and no other choice. So after I went back and forth for a few sets, you might only want to do a couple sets. If you're more advanced, you could do more volume. Again, I did not count, and I don't think I showed every single iteration of uh, that pairing, but I did about four or five uh, rounds back and forth. And then I went into some dumbbell pullovers and then some prone uh, dumbbell cobras on the bench, which you'll see in a second. So dumbbell pullovers are kind of a lost art. A lot of people don't do them. They don't do them properly. It's about how you feel. It's not always about how you look. My stomach is sucked in. I'm dropping my hips to offset the weight and I'm getting a great stretch in my lats, in my chest, my shoulders. You don't want to go so far that you're putting pressure on your shoulder, but it's a great move to open up the chest and open up the lats after a workout. You could also do a straight arm pull down with a cable if you prefer. Floor Cobras, those of you that are in Swolnormous X already, you know Floor Cobras are excellent for core activation, for stabilizing the hips and the core while you're activating your middle and lower trapezius, your posterior rotator cuff, all those um, muscles. You can do this on the floor without weights. I just decided to grab fives, go on a bench and get a little bit of a different angle because obviously I'm not on the ground. So by bringing my arms forward, I can get a little bit more of a stretch towards the bottom which will hit the muscles in a little different way. I probably could have gone a little bit heavier. It wasn't that stressful, but it was the last exercise pairing and I was focusing more of my attention on the dumbbell pullover. So I wasn't really concerned with, you know, crushing those uh, little stabilizers. I just wanted to focus more on the form more than anything. So make sure you take a nice deep breath in. You're breathing through these exercises comfortably. You're not putting pressure on your shoulder. You're executing them properly. And just remember when you do any of these exercises I'm demonstrating or any other ones that you're doing, it's about what muscles you're using and how you're executing the, the movement, not how much weight you're lifting. Fam, we fucking did it. I hope you enjoyed that workout. Uh, it was great. It was a little bit of a pre-fatigue workout, but it was great. It was great. Good volume, good pump. I enjoyed it. I liked it. I liked it. I'm feeling right. I'm feeling tight. Got a lot of the posterior rotator cuff, got a lot of stabilizers in there. I hope you enjoyed, learned something. Drop in the comments below, what do you like to do for a chest and back workout? Of course, all my workouts are slightly different um, and they adjust week to week, but I will keep you appraised of that. And I am happy and hoping to show you some new things and also remind you, that the basics fucking work. There are some exercises that should be a staple every single week in your training, and there are other ones that can kind of swap out and add some variety and add some different um, angles to your workouts that can hit different muscles that don't normally get hit, but that is what the game is all about. That's how the game is played. That's how your body is developed. That's how your body wants to work. Your body needs variety, but also needs to adapt. So I hope you enjoyed this workout. Remember to subscribe to the podcast. All the links are down below. And if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe for more sick fucking games. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this workout. Peace out. See you next time, fam. Coming at me like that, like whoa. Coming at me like that, like whoa. Coming at me like that, like whoa. Coming at me like that, like whoa.
but I don't And I swear if you want we can flow Come ready for the smoke Murder she wrote but I don't even dare I got places to go Come ready for the show Sacred the goat We got royal affairs We gon' win on the low Come ready for the glow You taking notes Have a seat Take a chair You may think that we